Okay, guys, can you hear that sound? No? I must not be gnashing my teeth and wailing loud enough. I just spent 45 minutes recording a video on how to make what's in here. Went to um, delete one small scene and it deleted <laughs> 45 minutes worth of videos and everything else that was on my SIM card. Okay, and today's not even Friday the 13th. Dead gummit. All right, so um, I can talk you through them, but that's not that stinking interesting. <laughs> okay, well, it's going to start all over. So, <laughs> uh, here we go. Remember the video I did? I showed you the tissue papers that I made for Cindy Utter. Here are the photocopies because they were downloaded onto the computer. Uh, for some reason, when I put them in Dropbox, it something happened to them. And it didn't work right. So she emailed us the files. She photocopied them and then e scanned them and photo scanned them and sent us the files. And here are the ones that I had printed off. So let's start with this one. I like the leaves. Um, actually, no, let's do this one. So what I was trying to explain now for the second time is how to make beads that are straight. Uh, let me cut the white part off the ends here. I don't want that on my bead. Looks good. Uh, so what I was explaining was the different holes of different sizes of beads, bead rollers. And I'm going to roll these at three quarters of an inch. So I want my beads to be three quarters of an inch long. And that one has too much white. See it? Oh, well, I guess you can't see it. It has too much white on the end. See? So what you'll see when I roll it is you'll have lots of white up here and nothing. So that one's gone. So we'll try again. May not be my day for recording a video. <laughs> All right, so... Let's do this. And I want to show you why this is a, a waste. I know that sounds odd. All right, so when you do the, these kind of beads, you get a limited... You, you get a larger palette to see what's on there. All right. But when you do the bicone beads, you only see snippets of color. Let me open up these. These are the ones that I finished for Cindy. So you get snippets of color. Focus. All right. So you really can't tell what's on the paper when you do one of these. And this one, these kind, it's limited, but you do see more here than you do on the bicones. So what I want to say is when you roll up these, you're only going to see, you know, the last two seconds of the beat. And let me show you what I'm talking about, which I just showed you evidently a while ago and wiped it all out. All right, this is... Let me look for the rollers. Yeah, let's see, the fattest one. This is the fattest one with the largest hole in it. So let's start with this one. And these are three quarter of an inch strips of computer paper that had a design scanned on them. This is not the original tissue paper. All right, so I'm gonna pull it out and make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna glue it. I'm just looking up to make sure the camera's recording after my last snafu. I smooth the glue out. I don't really like using um, stick glue for these because I don't think it sticks very well. Although, the way things have been going lately, nothing's doing well. All right, so there you go. See, so you're only going to see the last snippet. Come on, focus. 
you're only going to see the last snippet of the bead, right? You're not going to see the whole time that you spent decorating these strips. The bigger the hole, the more of the picture you're going to see. So let's go down to the smallest one I have, which is this one. We'll roll it on here and I'll show you the difference. Remember, it's three quarters of an inch of computer paper that had a design scanned on there. And your fingers have to work twice as hard to roll. Let me pull it tight. And pinch it. And then I'm going to put the glue on the end. This one as opposed to this one, you see a little more of the design on this one. Not by much. There's the whole difference. So if you're giving beads to a mixed media person, a lot of them like to use yarn or thicker, thicker fibers to tie the beads onto their journals. So I try to do it with a little bit larger hole. I prefer the smallest hole because I was I made jewelry and so I like for the holes not to be huge because that means less water that you can get in them if you're making a bracelet you know the smaller the hole the less chance it is you'll get something saturated by washing your hands so here we are with these two come on come on <laughs> all right so there you go so you're, so to me this is a waste so let me show you something more wonderful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper cutter and back you out so you can see what on earth I'm doing. Take my paper cutter. Here's a plain piece of computer paper. I'm going to do three quarters of an inch again. And I'm not going to put anything on the paper except on the last smidgen of it because you're never going to see the rest of it because this is all going to be rolled up into a giant circle or a giant cylinder. So let's take this and see what we can find. I need a fine line here. I'm going to draw Sorry, I'm out of frame. I keep forgetting I need to go forward. This is a kitty cat on the very end of the bead. All right. There's just no point doing some big to do on the bead because you're going to miss all of it. So, because I don't know how much this is going to take. I'm going to roll it with the largest roller and see how it does. Because I want to see the kitty cat. But I'd also like to see more on the other side too. I would like for it to go around. So what I have here is I have the cat. Whoops. Okay, so. <laughs> Go down to the next roller. Okay. You know, I think there are some days when you go to film that maybe you should just step away and go do something else. And I have a feeling that we are fast approaching that point today for me. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's try this again. I have too much white space. You can see the cat here but I want there to be something else on the back side. So I could do one of two things. I could draw another cat next to this one. So then I'll have a cat here and then a cat will be on the other side. Or I could go down to a smaller 
roller. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to a smaller roller because really and truly I do not want to redraw the cat. So let's try this again. and see what we end up with here. And again, now you you can see the cat, or not. <laughs> you can see the cat. But if you glue it down, you're also going to see a lot more white there. So, I think maybe this one, or the one smaller than this one, We'll do the trick. So this is the second smallest roller that I have. And even though I'm down to the second smallest roller, I still have a large gap right there where it's white. There's the cat. And I think that even if I roll this one, because I'm trying to prove a point, so this is why I keep doing this, I think that even if I roll with the smallest roller, I'm still going to have a white gap. And I may have to draw another cat on there. Let's see what we got here. All right, so here's this one. Yep, there's a big gap. Still, even with the smallest roller. So I'm left with a dilemma. Do I want to draw another cat? No, not really. But I will, because I don't see, like if I had drawn it this far over here, I might have been able to cut paper off so that it would work better, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going to draw another cat. I was trying to avoid that. But... All right, so let's do ears, head, ears, head, head, fat butt, and make the tail go this way. All right, so let me do this one a little darker. Whoops. Mess that one up. Oh, well. Okay, so this is just a demo piece. All right, so now when I roll it, let me do it with the big one first and see what we end up with. Well, let's do it on the proper end. Uh huh. Okay, pay attention. All righty then. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so there you go. You've got cat on the front, cat on the back. It's a continual picture of cat because now it's rolled so close together. Now, if I did this on a smaller roller, these guys would be overlapping, but just so happens that the fat one does, the fatter roller, the one with the largest hole will be just fine. And then this is going to bring me to my next experiment that I wanted to show you guys that I deleted. All right, so then I'm going to take this and roll this up in here. Kind of press it down. I cut off the tail just a hair on this other cat. But I think I can make the adjustment by writing over this, doing drawing over the seam to finish his little tail off. There we go. And the seam will not really appear to be too annoying because it'll have Mod Podge over it. So there's a nice open end bead, cylinder bead, with two cats on it that go all the way around the bead where you didn't waste your time um, decorating the rest of the paper when truly, you know, you don't need to spend time doing this unless you make a different kind of bead. But you only need the last, I don't know, not even an inch. Maybe 
half an inch to three quarters of an inch is all you actually need of this. And why waste your ink decorating that or paint decorating the rest of this when you're never going to see it? The only time I would say that, uh, let, me, let me show you my point. The only time I would say that it's a good thing is if you take a marker and you marked along the edge as best and straight as you can. Although, like I said, in many times that's not really going to be a, an issue because it's rolled up on each other and you really can't see how straight or crooked it is. All right, so let's do... Let's do black on this end, which will be the very end of the bead. No, let's not. <laughs> let's not do that. Be my stinking luck, it'll turn out icky. So let's just do a very thin line. There we go. And then I'm going to run this. I'm going to run this down here. You. And you don't need, on the end that you're starting on, you don't need to put any black ink on there. Save your pen. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, so this is the third from the bottom. It's like my middle, middle roller for the whole size. It's kind of in, it, it's in the middle. So that's when Having something on the end shows well. All right, so here we go. Let me bring you in a little more. So it was the patterned paper like this. Then I took the black marker and ran it on top. And look, you cannot see if it's if it's squiggly or straight or anything. Because, you know, it's right, it lays itself right on top of the other thing. And then I did the black line. You don't have to. And it would look okay if you didn't put the it might look better if you didn't put the black line because then it would be continuous for the pattern that was topped in the black. Another thing you can do is some people will take uh let's try this. Actually, I think it would be better. I don't know if this one will work or not. I don't know if this is dried up. Is this one dried up? But no, but it's not a great color. Oh yeah, it's not gonna go well. Okay, so let's try the Signo instead. So this is a Signo, Signo pen, and I'm gonna color the top and bottom I'm not I'm not gonna smear it if I can help it all right so let me make this a shorter bead no let's not okay Yes, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to cut this one off because I really don't want the ugly color on the other end. And so I real roll this one on a smaller roller because I'm not going to get the effect I'm hoping for if I put it on a large one. So let's do the small one. And you'll see this in a lot of people's Etsy stores or on Pinterest where it looks like they've dipped it in gold. And I have dipped it in gold paint on the ends. But if you take your Signo and run it along the, the end, you don't need to dip it in paint because you've basically already done that with the pen. Take a couple seconds to run it down the side. You don't have to be especially neat with it because it's going to be rolled up and no one's going to know. All right, so there we have. A 
a gold tip. Focus, focus. A gold tip bead. Come on, focus, silly thing. That would be a gold tip bead. And then you have the black tip bead. And there you go. It's a fancy bead that took like little or no effort to make. Truly, they are super duper easy to do. All right, so what else was I going to show you today that I filmed and deleted? Um, okay, uh, let's, let me stop this and look for what I'm looking for, and then I will come back. Okay, so this is not ideally what I wanted to show because I thought I picked out the nicer ones earlier and then deleted it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a postage stamp, and I am peeling it off of the paper someone nicely stuck on there and it's very thin and that's great I'm glad it's thin I don't like this woman up here in the corner I don't want her on my stamp and I really don't want the ridges so I'm gonna slice the ridges off I'm gonna cut her head off and the 19 cents that was on there whoops I'm gonna cut more than her head off there we go all right then I'm gonna cut a little off of here and I'm going to cut the name of where this place is in France. <laughs> and now I've got this nice little picture. It's going to look great on the end of a bead. So in order for me to put this on the end of the bead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white sheet of paper. I'm going to glue it. Not a lot of glue. Try not to get too glue heavy. Sometimes I get a little heavy handed with the glue. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to flip my paper over since I got glue on the other side. I don't want it on there. And I'm going to lay it on the end of the paper. Give it a nice press down. I'm going to take the paper cutter and I'm going to line it up in the paper cutter so that I only cut the width of the bead the same width as the stamp. So let me make sure I have this in here straight. I don't want... it's about an inch. How, how did that happen? Hmm. It's a miracle. I to use one of those when I delete all my stuff off. All right, so we're gonna hang with the one inch. And I did trim a little off the bottom, so it's okay. All right, now, because you're only gonna see the last portion of this, I wanna see, just like I tried with the others, I wanna see how much of the end I'm gonna see. So I start on the end that's white, that no one's ever gonna see. Roll. And a little wet and there's going to be an ever so slight gap of white see that gap of white I don't want that in my bead so unfurl it okay so this is the largest hole this is second largest third fourth and fifth I think I might like to go for the middle one. So let's give this one a shot and see how, if it overlaps and if it really will change the way the stamp looks. I don't want to mess the picture up. I already cut the lady's head off. <laughs> All right, let's pull that. Let's see what we get here. All right, so here we are rolling again and it's wet, so it's sticking up just a tad. And there'll be a bit of an overlap on the bead. I don't want it to overlap, so back we go, up a size. Now, you may not care if it overlaps. It may be color on one end and color on the other. If it overlaps, it won't affect the main picture that you're trying to present or to feature. I don't want there to be an overlap. And I don't want a white gap. And there we have it. This is the perfect size. It came right together at the end. 
I'm going to mash it down to make sure it's lovely and flat. There's the part I glued in the very beginning, and here's the end. So I'm going to need to do some glue magic here on both ends to make sure everything stays the same. Roll this in. Press her down. And then roll this one in and press it down. And then I'm going to kind of roll it on the board, on the cardboard to make sure it lays flat. And I think I'm going to need, yep, going to need a hair more glue. Uh, for a hair of glue, I think we're going to do a little dab with a toothpick and put it underneath to slide it underneath here and spread it around the toothpick so it doesn't get too sloppy and squeeze out and then make a dirty bead. There you have it. A lovely scene that you did not have to draw because I am not a drawer. Well, maybe just a teeny bit, but not a lot. All right, so there's a bridge over a lovely gorge somewhere in France. And there's the picture right there of the bridge over the gorge. And it's a stamp and you didn't have to draw a stinking thing. All you had to do was peel some paper and glue. And yes, you will have to fool around with it just a hair to make sure that, you know, it meets in the middle down here. And you'll have to fool around with the hole, which determines how much of the stamp you're going to get to see. Pretty cool, huh? I just love the way this looks. Anyway, so I did this earlier with a heart, a heart stamp well, my fingers are dirty, I'm sorry. Um, a heart stamp, which went all the way around. And it was white. And I did shave some of the white off, but here's the heart and there's the heart. So it's not that much. Then I did a butterfly. Here's the butterfly bead. And I got it for, I got it to match wing to wing by just shaving a little off the stamp and making sure I use the right side roller. This one took the giant roller. Then I did this one, which was a star. And it met, but what I should have done was shaved off a little white off the stamp for the, the outline of the stamp. Although the stamp does meet in the middle, I don't like the white stripe going up the middle, but it's cool. So there is how to roll beads without wasting a lot of your time drawing or wasting a lot of your ink drawing. Use a post-it stamp. Use a pretty piece of paper. Cut something out of a magazine and just do it on the end of a piece of paper. It turns out beautifully. All right, everybody. So I think I've recouped and redeemed myself for messing up my video. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.